So The Grasses of the Northern Tablelands Field Guide is a book that we've had for quite a while. Myself and a colleague, Jeff Lewin, have gone through and edited it. We've added some pastures that have come in to the region that we thought would be important. And we're hoping that it'll be a really useful paddock field guide for our landholders, um, whether they're new to the region or they've been here for a long time and would like some help in identifying some of the newer species in our region. The guide does go into talking about the common names, which mostly what producers use, um, but it also then references the scientific name because that's where we need to come back to, always with the scientific name, um, to ensure that we are talking about the same species because often there is multiple common names and it can cause confusion. So we often have the debate of introduced species over native species, which is better. Um, what should I plant in my paddocks now that the fires have gone and the, the drought seems to have dissipated? So we can use the book to go out and see what's there. Um, I always think it's really important to see what you've got in your paddocks. What's survived the tough few years that we've had? Um, what's growing well? Uh, what do you stock like? Let's try and see if you can ID what, what they're chewing on and, and use those as a guide. So ID them out, find out what you've got. in. Different paddocks will be different, different soil types will grow different um, compositions of pastures. So once we can identify what species we've got out there, we can use them as an indicator then of should we continue to plant more of that species or maybe there's um, a species that's quite similar that would grow quite well in those situations. I think um, definitely by using something that's quite happy there, let, let's grow on that and let's let's utilize that as opposed to recreating the wheel. Another thing as well as identifying pastures and, and managing your grazing habits going forward, uh, a soil test is another thing. So we look at the, the physical, the chemical and the biological um, health of our soil and by doing a soil test we, we're generally looking at the chemical health of our soil and we can then ensure that our nutrition is, is of good health um, where our pH is at and what particular soil type it is to make sure when we are um, selecting species or wanting to encourage native species to continue to grow that, that we have that right environment for them to prosper in and, and really give us the grass that we want. Make them competitive and particularly against weed species. We do see new species pop up that may have been introduced whether it's through fodder whether it's through livestock, whether it's through seed or just um, maybe a little laxy daisy on some biosecurity such as vehicles, foreign vehicles coming in and out of our paddocks. So by having this book on hand really helps you get straight onto those pasture species, grass species that you think, oh, maybe I haven't had this one before. You can sit down and key it out quite quickly uh, and give yourself the confidence. So if it is a species that you don't want growing on your farm we can jump onto that really quickly and and have an eradication process as opposed to waiting till it takes hold of half a paddock before we have to start to go in and try and control that we're really hoping that this book can be on the dash of the ute or in a really good spot in the workshop maybe at your kitchen table something that you can readily access and try and identify yourself when you really want that answer quickly as opposed to possibly made it in contact with someone that can ID that for you. Um, we're hoping that this will empower the farmers to be able to do that themselves. It's a great guide because it covers off some really descriptive structures of the plant, such as the oracles and the ligule and the nodes, the rhizomes and the stolons. And these are really key points when you're trying to identify grass that you haven't seen before, including the, like the leaf blade. Does it have a ring of hairs around the stem? Is there oracles, are they large, are they small, are they hairy? Dissecting it down to knowing what kind of seed head structure that you've got to describe that and identify that will really narrow down quickly what species you have on hand. Often a lot of different species have different growth patterns, um, different grazing habits, and by knowing what species you have, it's really helpful then to manage those species um, for their longevity and also to match those energy and protein requirements for your classes of livestock. Mm -hmm.